Well, a pleasant good day to all of you and thank God he is still on the throne. Difficulties arise every day. The culture in which we live is continuing to pull away from Christ. But you and I, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So God is depending upon you and I to keep the world going towards Jesus. So today I want you to take a little inventory and if you're starting your day or you're ending your day, whatever position you're in, you can determine whether or not your life is pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our prayer as we bring you this broadcast that you begin to make a solid impact in the world in which we live. We are supposed to reach people with the glorious news that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. And those that have surrendered to him, we're to encourage them to keep on running till they meet him face to face. May God bless you richly. I'm Pastor Eric Lambert of the Bethel Deliverance International Church, and we're bringing you the Christian and the culture. And I'm joined here by two outstanding men of God, men of God that are seminary trained, biblically based, full of the Holy Spirit, and will bring you what <laughs> thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Pastor Timothy Baldwin from the Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Pastor, how are you today? Bishop, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Christian and the Culture family, let's go. Let's do it. It's time to go. <laughs> and of course, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon from Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown. So if you're near any of these churches, please visit these men of God. You'll get sound Bible teaching and have a great worship experience. Pastor, how are you today? Well, I'm well, Bishop. Thank you for asking, and uh, thank you for that beautiful intro. And Christian and Culture family, we are ready. Move the coffee table. Get your notepad. This is going to be a very hot topic. All right. Now, some <laughs> of you have written and you've asked where our churches are located. And so we'd like to take an opportunity right now for each pastor to give you the address of their church so that if you're in the area or you just feel like you want to experience the worship service with other brothers and sisters, they'll be able to tell you where you can join them and the time of their worship on Sunday. Pastor Tim? Uh, we are located in the northeast section of Philadelphia at 7770 Dungan Road, uh, Philadelphia PA 19111. And our Sunday service is at 1030 a.m. And Wednesdays we have prayer from 6 to 7, Bible study from 7 to 8. Come and join us. Look forward to seeing you all. Praise God. Pastor Brian. God bless you. We're in the not so far from Philadelphia, Pottstown, <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, at 398 Circle of Progress Drive in Pottstown. Uh, and uh, we have services on Sunday, 10 a.m., and prayer and Bible study every Wednesday, starting at 7.15 on the nose. We'd love to see you in the place. God bless. All right. So please make plans to join these men of God as they worship the Lord, teach the glorious word of God to encourage the people in, in their walk with the Lord. In the book of Joel, there are some very mm. powerful prophecies that are given to us, but one that we want to focus on today as it relates to the times in which we live comes from Jer uh, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, and he says, And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And then he says, and upon the servants and handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth and fire and blood and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood. But here's the key. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. For in, a, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Gentlemen, we're living here in the 21st century where specific and particular spiritual signs are rare. Mm, it's true. Joel's promising us an outpouring of the Spirit of mm. God in the last days. We can agree that we're in the last days. We can agree. We can agree. <laughs> so we should expect an outpouring of the Spirit. We should. All right. Without making it so spiritual that we can't grasp it. How would you describe the outpouring of the Spirit in the last days? Wow. You know, we, we think, we jump right to, I know I do, my mind, when you read that scripture, my mind jumped right to the miraculous. Yes. 
But what if the Lord is saying that I'm pouring out my spirit for you to live right, yes. mm. for you to be an example, mm. okay. for you to carry the kingdom culture, okay. to yeah. carry the wow. gospel, the glorious gospel wow. of Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. And, and in its simplicity, yeah. right? And, and th that's why I'm pouring out my spirit. I'm pouring, my, pouring out my spirit so that I will have a representation in the earth. Wow. Yes. That's good. That's yeah, good. That's good. Um, I have to agree with Pastor Tim. And I, th I always get in my mind this suddenly effect <laughs> that we'll be doing what's right, as they were in the book of Acts. I, I believe the way a thing starts is the way it ends. So in the book of Acts, they were praying, they were meeting. There was some kind of expectation. They did not know what to look for. But they had an expectation because of a promise. Jesus is going to happen. And so as they're praying, suddenly. I am hoping <laughs> right? that, that one day we are praying on one accord, our churches are connected, we're praying together, and then there'll be a suddenly, we don't know what it looks like, mm -hmm. but a suddenly will fall on us. How do we get to the one accord? I mean, mm. it seems like that's the insurmountable uh, object right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. How do we get to one accord? Mm. You know, I, I think there's a lot of things that happens within the context of Christianity. Um, with, with, especially when you talk about church, you know, the competition, um, you yeah. know, for us to be on one accord, we have to really lower our, our, our borders and boundaries around what we do in our own yeah. ministries and yeah. our own, and our own ethnicities mm -hmm. and our own churches. Wow. You know, we have to lower the, 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 the walls of, you know, separation because I, I, the church is separated. Yeah. Sure, you it know, is. it's it's separated, and and I think that in order for us to get to a place of unity, we have to, we're, we're gonna have to really see each other as brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and not okay, I'm this denomination, I'm that denomination, or I'm this color, that color, yeah. or my worship style is different from yours, and my, we we have to really be able to embrace the diversity about about uh, the body of Christ, and 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 begin to come together. I always say this, mm. if the church ever unified, the world changes today, changes right now. I agree, now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Is, our, is our separation, Pastor Brian, is it intentional? I mean, wow. uh, you know, we, we worship the way we worship as African Americans. Yeah. Sure. Do we seek out other ethnicities to join us, or is it kind of like just if you come in, God brought you in, right. as opposed to <laughs> seeking them out? Yeah, we do not seek them out. Um, most of us don't seek them right. out. Right. Um, and I don't think it started intentionally. I think this was a subtle move of the enemy over time to get us to a place where it just is what it is. I think there was a, a grand move maybe, you know, probably decades ago where people were trying to kind of see into one another. Um, but then now, it, it, now it's just, we are intentionally in our own camps. We are intentionally trying to do it our own way. And I always say this, uh, we've been going, I think we've been going about this the wrong way. Unity at this point will never happen by a conversation because we'll, we'll say one thing today and we'll go right back to our own ways. Yeah. It's going to take tribulation. Mm. It's only one thing that's going to get the church unified. Tribulation will make us say it ain't about the worship. It ain't about the color. It's not about the seats. It's about do you know Christ. And tribulation is the only thing I believe that's going to, that's going to get us to that unified place. So, There's an old proverb. It's not biblical, but it's an old teaching that says, look and see who your enemy fights the hardest, mm -hmm. and there you'll find a friend. Yeah. And we, we can't come together until we identify one enemy. That's right. Right now, we look at enemies racially, ethnicity. Right. We look at enemies, you know, <laughs> congregationally, denominationally, sure. uh, political yeah. parties. And as long as we're fighting against each other, yeah. God can't flow through us. Agreed. Right? This promise in Joel comes after mm. a great judgment. Yeah. I mean, I love that first yeah, chapter yeah, yeah. when he yeah. talks about the judgment. He says, even the drunk people are going to be crying because <laughs> there won't be any grapes for right, wine. Right, right. You know, and then he sends in the four developmental stages yeah. of the locust, the caterpillar, yes. the palmer worm, the cankerworm. Cane he says, they eat up everything. And that, and that study of those yeah. four insects, it's beautiful because he said, that which the palmer worm have eaten, yes. the cankerworm, yes. and by the time they're done, there's nothing left. Nothing. Mm. And I know he's speaking literally mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but if we were to take that figuratively, yeah. we have watched our nation and our world 
be eaten away by spiritual canker we're, worms we're and palmer it. worms. Yes, There's not yes, much sir. left to hold us together. Yes, it appears, and believe me, I'm no extremist, <laughs> but it appears that COVID did something that the blessings couldn't do. Oh, it brought yeah. us together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It gave us a common enemy. Yes, sir. Right. And yes, everywhere sir. around the yes, world, sir. people were sharing information yes. to try to defeat it. Yes. And, you know, ultimately we pulled apart again. Yeah. But, but for, for about six months, right. everybody was <laughs> we saying, were we, we, the scientists yes. were changing information. Yeah. Yes. and yeah. All the Christians were calling United yeah. Prayer but Sessions United yeah. prayer. to bring people together to yeah. get this yes, thing sir. off of us. And then, as with everything in our world, as soon as you get past the heated part, we go right back <laughs> to individuality. Go right back to our old ways. This passage, God talks about the miraculous. Yes, young, yes. Men, young men seeing vision, yes. old men yep. having dreams. Yes. It appears to me the key phrase in verse 28 is afterwards. Hmm. Yes. These things come after something At, else. Yes, now, sir. we know the text is suggesting repentance. Yes. What are some of the things that we can use as the precursor for afterward to see the miraculous? We know repentance is, is, yeah. is number one. Sure. But what are some of the other things our listeners can begin to employ to see the miraculous move of God? Yeah, I, I think our, our, our personal devotional time. Yeah. You know, and one good. of the things I'm, I'm going to take what Pastor Brian said, one of the things that's that good. will push us to that is, is test and trials. That's yeah. good. You know, uh, our personal devotional time, our reconnection with our spiritual community. Wow. Mm -hmm. Those things are important. The enemy Very has important. done a job on the church. Yeah. I, I, I'm not one because the scriptures, the scriptures are clear in terms of uh, the, 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 the uh, gates of hell will not prevail against mm -hmm. the church. Sure. Mm -hmm. the, the institution of the church is on the ropes. That's true. Yeah. But the church itself is not no, in trouble. Sure, no. yeah. But, yeah. but I Good think point. that we have to be careful that uh, we that we recognize that that it is important for community and fellowship. Yeah. And we got to get back to that place. Yeah. We got to get yeah. back to that place. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Part part of the natural growth of church, according to the Book of Acts, is three care uh, three areas: prayer. Uh, a fellowship and attending to that word. Wow. There's really three. It wasn't all the stuff we do now. Right. right. <laughs> no bake sales. No, right. you know, none of that right. stuff. Just prayer, fellowshipping with one another and, and getting to the word. And I think there's a part of that. We know there's a part of that that's been kind of challenged is the fellowship where people are just out of churches. And I think it's a subtle attempt to kill the, the Christian community. Nobody makes this on their own. Yeah. No one becomes a strong believer by themselves. We need one another. I, I just need to tell the folks in church, you need to get back to church. We need you to, we need you to wake up and hear this. This is a clarion call. Get back to houses of worship because before we know it, they're going to, there's a possibility that we won't even be able to do that again. Pastor Brian, what do you say to the person that says, I don't need to come back, I can just watch online? Yeah, no, it's not, it's not the same watching online. <laughs> you, you, you need to feel the presence of God. There's something about community. Yeah. There's something about the tangible. And when you're in church, there's a tangible feel. There's, there's a real feeling to it. On the computer, it's just as the next thing you watch. And that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. You know, after, after the sermon goes off, the next thing you watch is the game. Right. Th th there's no time for meditation. There's no time to go see a brother or fill in a, uh, you know, hug a person that's been sick that, that finally comes back to community. You know, th there are so many nuances we're missing, and the enemy knows it. And this is where we really want to pull the church back and say, listen, it does matter that you go to church, and it does matter that you get into a house of worship. Before we know it, we'll be so distant from one another, even more distant. Yeah. Uh, than what we are now. So that, that, that's just my quick soapbox. The, the strength of the church is in its corporate yes, it is. connection. Yes. yes, it is. That's why Paul uses one anothering so much. You can't yes. one another yes. by live stream. Right. Yes. And I always use this as an example. Uh, the Super Bowl comes on and the best seats in the house really are in the house. Are in the house. They are. You True. can get up, True. go to the bathroom, <laughs> go to the kitchen, get yes. food. Yep. The, you're, you're in a yeah, comfortable that's chair. True. That's true. Nobody's hacking around yeah. you. You're just sitting there. But if somebody offers you two tickets on the 50-yard line, yes. <laughs> they, you'd go to that they game. They best yes, seats yes, in the yes, house. Yes. You'd go to that but game. You know what I say to that bishop? I say... But you missed the halftime show. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You know, it's right, something right, like right. being yeah. there. Something being about being there. And, yeah. and I think that when God includes these blessings, yes. 
it concludes with whosoever calls on the name of the yes. Lord. So yes. again, yes. we come right back to a dependency on God. On God, yes, sir. You know, we mm. face a wicked culture. Yes, we do. And it seems like, and, and I, I would say this is innocent. I, I would not suggest that this is being done deliberately, but I think that we spent so much time building our nation and building our yes. ability to be successful that we've almost excluded God. Right? Yeah. True. You know, yeah. when we started True. growing and when we emerged from the depression, we were godly because yeah, yeah. he brought us through. He brought yes. us out. Yeah. And yeah. every great challenge that we had mm -hmm. as a nation was met by some form yes. of God dependence. Yes. Yeah. Now, because of the way we become antichrist, it's almost as if we're suggesting we don't need you. That's, that's the mm. sound. So we're kicking you out of school. Yes. We're kicking you out yes. of marriage and home. We're yes. kicking you out of politics. Yes. We're kicking you out of everywhere. And yes. the hypocrisy of this yes. is that Congress begins their session with prayer. Mm. But children cannot pray. But children can't pray. A and we're paying for it. Yes. Uh, it's visible. You kick God out of school. Now. School. It's the first now time we've ever weapons. heard. Weapons are in schools now. Never had that. You, you kick, them out, kick God out of marriage, the divorce rate goes through the roof. It, it, there has to be, even if you're not the most <laughs> dedicated spiritual person in the world, just be smart enough yeah, to right. see. There's yeah. a correlation so There's a correlation with yeah. this. Yeah. You yeah. threw God out, now you need metal detectors. Now you, <laughs> amen. You know, and, and, and here we are. Wow. God is promising us a miraculous, a miraculous move. Yes. 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 I mean, it really is. Yes. It, it doesn't matter how it comes. No, it All doesn't. It, to me, I, I'm like Pastor Tim, to me it's saying, I'm going to do something to pull you all together. Yeah. Yeah. And the result yeah. of that is people yeah. going to call on the Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Amen. And that's not happening today. Folks are afraid right now because of the rising gas price. Can yeah. you imagine yeah. Yeah, almost $6 a gallon Shh. for gasoline yeah. and people still won't yeah. come they to still call won't. on the Lord? Well, you know it's bad when we can't get baby for Yes. Yeah, I mean, something. And they still won't right. call on the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Because they're too busy calling on the government. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So yeah. God's letting yeah. the government government fail yeah. and fail us yeah. so that we can say there's no other hope but the Lord. But him. Yes. Yeah, I think and I don't think God to. minds being the last resort. I know he'd rather be the first, <laughs> right, but sure. I don't think he minds yeah. it. At least yeah. you're in your right mind. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> at least you're like, oh, hey, hey, look, I'm going to call on the Lord. I'm going to call on him with all the left. <laughs> and, and we've tried everything else. We have. We Social really agendas. Have. Now, you know, we have young people who, who don't even know if they're male or female. Yeah, yeah. about that. I mean, how, how, how sick that. is this? And yet here God again is saying, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you some signs. We're wow. seeing these signs. We are yeah. seeing these signs. We We're are. seeing devastation. Yes. You know, the other day I heard about a man walking down the street and a bird attacked him. Yeah. A bird a attacked bird. him. <laughs> yeah. I said, even the animals are in rebellion. Paul talks about that and in that the letter the to the Romans. Says, yeah. Absolutely. He yeah. said, all of creation is in groaning. That's it's, right. It's waiting for the manifestation of the sons the of sons God. Of God. The, yes. the uh, weather. Yes. Your hurricanes, <laughs> tornadoes. We've had in more tornadoes Northeast. than yeah. ever before. Yes. And they're, they're saying the wind patterns are yes. excessively yes. out of control. So these aren't even normal hurricanes. They're... They're all over the place. I don't understand what prevents us from mm -hmm. calling on the Lord for mercy. Wow. Arrogance. This is just ridiculous. It is arrogance. We it can't, is arrogance. you know, you can, you can govern certain things. Yeah. Sure. Right. And you can enact laws and legislation for certain things. Yeah. But nobody can control the weather. <laughs> no, you can't. God is sending no, a message. Can't. That's right. He I don't necessarily think he's sending a message with the violence. I think the violence is the result of a lot of things. Yeah. 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 But when the, when the elements start yeah, with, rebelling, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is saying, you better listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> you better listen to me or I'm going to wipe out your whole town That's with a right. windstorm. That's right. <laughs> you get 125 mile an hour winds. There's nothing you can do. I had friends that were down in Florida and they had that storm go through, shut down the airport for three days. Everything. Only God could do that. Only God. And he's just trying to get our attention. So whosoever will call on the name of the Lord wow. will be saved. Will be saved. What is that's all it takes, brothers. What a hope. What a hope. Wow. And, and that's what we really want people to hear is that yes. there's hope. Yes. It's, it's, yes. listen, if you read yes. the Bible that yes. we read, it's yes. not going to get much prettier, no. <laughs> right? No. It's going to get a little worse. But the hope is they that call upon the name of the Lord, yes. you're going to be saved. Wow. Wow.
As we come to the close of this broadcast, I would like for these men of God to share with you, each one take about a minute or so and share what you think God is saying to the church today. Mm. Mm -hmm. wow. As we approach the end times, as Joel says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and there will be miraculous mm. moves of God in many different dimensions. But if you were speaking for God right now in one minute's time to our listeners, wow. what do you think God is saying, Pastor Tim? Wow. I, I think God is preparing the church for a great move. I do. But I also think God is warning the church too. The God is, uh, God is warning the church to realign itself mm -hmm. with his agenda. Wow. That's what I believe. Because I believe that there is coming a time in this great country mm. where we will have to connect ourselves together Absolutely. because of the tribulation that's coming on this country and the judgment that's coming on this country. And so I believe that the Lord is saying, prepare yourselves. And as the text says, he's going to pour out his spirit. Yeah on all flesh, on, on sons flesh. and daughters will prophesy and, and mm. young men will dream dreams. Yeah. I believe that God is preparing his people for something that's coming. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Pastor I, Brian. I totally agree with uh, the divine alignment and I, I'm going to cry like Jeremiah and the other prophets, awake from your sleep. And I think the real clarion call is it's time to wake up church. See the signs. If no one else is seeing them, those of you who believe in the Lord should see the signs of the time. Yes. Jesus said, how is it that you can tell when the seasons change? How is it that you can tell spring from fall and wow. yet wow. look in the world and not be able to discern mm -hmm. that the Lord is on the way? He will return. It's time to wake up, church. Wow. You know, God is speaking to his people. There are uh, scripture supports five ways that God speaks. He speaks audibly through people, through dreams and visions. He speaks through tribulations, circumstances, and conditions. But the fifth way, he speaks through his word. If you're watching us today and you are a believer, you have the word of God. And the word of God is designed to bring you to God. The word will never speak hmm. contrary to the heart of God. And there is one strong fact in the word of God, and that is God loves you. I know you may come from an upbringing where you never experienced love, where you didn't have parents who loved you, you didn't understand what it meant to be loved unconditionally. Like so many of us, the love that you experienced had conditions, strings attached. Hmm. If you love me, you let me. If you love me, you'll hmm. do for me, you'll give wow. me. But God says, I love you with an everlasting love. And the only thing I want from you is you. So today I want you to sit and think about that. No matter how rotten you feel, or if anyone else has ever told you something negative about yourself, God loves you. Mm. And so we're here to bring you relevant truth from the Word of God to get you ready for the inevitable day when you will stand before this holy God. Sin cannot stand in the presence of God, mm -hmm. and sin cannot live inside of you. No. The scripture boldly declares that the unrighteous will not see God. Wow. We want you to become the seed of righteousness. And it's very simple. You don't have to become a church goer. You don't have to become religious. Yes. It's very, very simple. Very simple. You know how easy it is? We're not telling you you have to try to cross I-95 and not get hit by a car in the that's middle right. of the afternoon. <laughs> no, that's foolish. But all you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Yes. And I heard what these men of God said today. You're pouring your spirit out upon all flesh and miraculous things are taking place. Yes. And I want to be part of your family. And he said, he that calls upon the name of the Lord would be saved. So all you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Yes. Wash me clean in your precious blood. Yes. Save me from ungodliness and I will serve you with all my life. Mm. If you say that today, God will do it. Yes. And you'll be just as much a Christian as either one of us. Yes. As any apostle in Jesus' day, you will be a born again child of God. So come on, take the pledge. Lord yes. Jesus, forgive me. Yes. I give my life to you. I want to be saved. And he will save you. The Bible says, him that cometh to me. I will in no, wise in no wise cast out. Yes. Come on and get ready for this outpouring. <laughs> yeah. Join us and watch God yes. move yes. in these last days. God bless you, Christian. As you confront this culture, do it with victory. In Jesus' name, 
God bless you. There are times in life when the pull of this culture wears us down and leaves us feeling defeated. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. In his new book, The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. reminds us of tools in the Word of God that the Christian must use to maintain a life of victory. Walking in Victory offers fresh insight about living for Jesus with a focus on walking in the Spirit and in the fruit thereof. Learn how to maintain your identity and purpose as a believer by ordering Walking in Victory. The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, is available at ericlambertministries.org and wherever books are sold. Does God desire for his followers to be conformed to today's culture? Or are believers supposed to function, think, and be distinctively different? In his new book, Cancel the Culture, Securing Our Identity as Christians, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. provides guidance for the Christian trapped in a struggle for identity. Each chapter of the book presents a challenge for the reader to cancel a specific ungodly influence of modern culture. As these influences are abandoned, the special purpose of God's calling for His children will become clearer. Journey toward rediscovering your identity as a child of God by ordering your copy of Cancel the Culture. Visit ericlambertministries.org to order the book and find more resources that will enhance your walk with Christ. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry or to partner with us, visit BethelDeliverance.org and go to the media outreach link to make a donation. You can also call 215-885-2585 to speak with a media representative. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Be blessed.